Hello language learning lovers, very glad to see you on my channel and very happy to be filming this video in which I'm going to show you how to set up your own language learning journal slash notebook. Now, before we get into it, let me note that today I'm not going to bring you any set of strict rules on how to do it. First of all, because there are no rules and secondly, because the purpose of today's video is to bring you, to give you some motivation to create your own language learning notebook and well, as well to show you how I create my own ones. I decided to show you today these three language notebooks that I have for Hindi, French and Spanish, telling you right now there won't be any trackers or language learning goals. Uh, it's just that I don't understand the purpose of them uh, in language notebooks. Almost in every video I've watched on this topic, people were showing uh, them a lot. Like, really, the biggest part of their tutorials was setting up language learning goals pages and habit trackers instead of actual language learning pages. I hope you get what I mean. So today we are concentrating on language learning. Now get your notebook, prepare some tea and let's begin. Okay, let's start with this one. This is my notebook for French. Let's see what's inside. Some of you must already know how much I love art and handmade, that's why I just couldn't leave these first pages blank and plain. I guess first pages are perfect for some motivational quotes, reminders of why you began learning this language, or drawing something that you associate the country where that language is spoken with. That's a good way to remind yourself that one day you'll be able to say everything in real life. I left a little space here so that later, when I finish all the notebook, I'll write here some sort of a content, what textbooks I worked with, what vocab I added, and something like that. So the first six pages I decided to dedicate to some phrases and several grammar rules to review that I actually really needed, because I started this notebook after quite a long break from French. I added uh, this revision pages, some useful phrases and sentences to learn, and then decided to leave two more for other phrases that may come up later. And this is, I think, the most important part of this notebook. You might sometimes have such a question as what can I even write in my language learning notebook? Well, if you're studying with a textbook, you won't even ask yourself that question. Look how many ideas for writing vocabulary I got thanks to learning with a textbook. In my case, it's this one. I start every lesson with a bit of vocabulary, highlight those words I need to learn or think are important. Then I choose several exercises and as you can see there's always something useful to find and make notes of. I usually try to use the same color, light blue, um, of a highlighter for such purpose so that it will always catch my eye every time I flip through the pages and may learn or revise something visually. After every three lessons I have to do a revision. There's some cultural information and reading tasks and here's the whole page with new words and phrases with translation and examples. And the third part of every module is the whole set of exercises. This textbook has keys, so I don't have any problems to check and correct it all afterwards. As you can see, studying with a textbook makes all your study sessions more or less organized, 
therefore your language notebook will also be divided into modules, lessons, revisions. You can use a specific color of highlighters for each of them. I don't forget about stickers either, that in my view make the pages look more interesting and eye-catchy. But using a textbook for French study sessions is not the only thing I do. This notebook has a secret part from another side. I thought it'd be good to divide student book sessions and reading sessions. In this part I add cultural information I get from these magazines. There's always a little story waiting for you, which I read, write out new words, translate, add examples and then retell the whole story. And look how great it is! You learn something new about culture, well, French in this case, you learn new vocab through reading and then practice writing as well. There's a lot of pages uh, still to be filled. Maybe we'll make a separate video when I finish it all up, so don't forget to subscribe, not to miss it. Okay, let's move on and have a look at this notebook for Spanish, shall we? In general, I'm organizing this notebook in a very similar way to the previous one for French, so if you skipped that part, make sure to come back to check it out anyways, you may find some interesting ideas for your notebook. I set up the first motivation pages similarly here too, with a bit of space left to be able to make a content part later with the names of all the textbooks I used here. For my main Spanish sessions I use this student book that has everything – reading, grammar, listening and speaking tasks. I divide every lesson I do likewise. First, I write some grammar rules, mostly a revision of those things I know and write down several examples from the textbook or just make up my own ones. I then add new vocabulary, I have a special color for it too, and since in every session there's an interesting writing task I did here too. It's actually something really good, because later reading this once again will help me see my real progress to see if my way of writing had, has changed what vocabulary I used, etc. I think it's much better this way than some kind of progress trackers, for example. On the other side, I have something interesting too. These two books make me discover so many new things about Spanish culture itself and the whole Hispanic world. I add the most important, in my view, things here. I try to add some pictures and stickers so that it'll be already like a journal, this part of the notebook I mean. And again, I highlight some words um, that I have to translate and add into the vocabulary part. And coming to the last notebook for today, really like the design I've made for this one, my Hindi notebook. Since I'm still learning the characters, there aren't a lot of pages I've filled yet, but anyways, I'd love to show you them. Just by flipping through the pages you can already Notice this notebook is quite colorful, uh, with several of my sketches and a lot of stickers with Indian theme. The student and workbooks I'm using for Hindi now are made for Russian speakers, that's why I 
mostly write something related to grammar and translate in Russian. In every lesson I learn several new characters, which I highlight with different colors so that they will be eye-catchy and I get a little set of new words containing those new letters. Since words in Hindi have genders, and sometimes it has nothing to do with Spanish, French or Russian, when it comes to female and male words, for example, the word room in Spanish, French and Russian is female, meanwhile in Hindi it's male. To try to remember this, I decided to draw a little circle, pink or blue, depending on the gender, in front of every word. If you're a visual learner like me, it may help. Almost all the tasks I write here too, so I practice my writing in Hindi, which is still hard for me sometimes. I haven't done anything in this part of my Hindi notebook yet, even though I'm considering starting to write about India here and its traditions, there's so much to write about. I'm sure I'll upload something in the nearest future, so don't forget to subscribe. sum up this little tour of my language learning notebooks, let's make some conclusions, shall we? First, you don't need any habit trackers or language learning goals. I know it might be overwhelming to see, to watch all those famous language learning bloggers and to see how they fill up their language learning notebooks and journals with habit trackers, with language learning goals, and you might feel you must do the same, but I'll tell you what, you don't. Feel free to create your own ways to have your study sessions. Of course, it will take you some time to discover your own preferences when it comes to language notebooks. And you might even think that language learning goals page is one of the essentials in your notebook. The rule here is not to feel any pressure at all and do what you want to do, not what others do. Second, the most important thing is to keep your notebook neat and clean. It might also be a good idea to use the same pen and a specific set of highlighters. This way the pages in your notebook will look more beautiful, aesthetic if you want, and don't forget about all the stickers you may add to your pages. And finally, use textbooks in your language learning sessions. In every lesson you will have literally everything – vocabulary, listening, reading, writing, um, speaking tasks. Divide each one two pages in your notebook into those parts too. Use pencils and highlighters so that the pages in your notebook will look more or less organized. Hope it was a useful and motivating video for you guys and you found some inspiration. If it's so, don't forget to subscribe and join the free newsletter on my website. If you'd like to receive unique extra content from me every month, or just to support my channel and blog, you can do it just by leaving a little tip. Find the link in the video description. Thank you and see you in another video.